Welcome. It's April 9th, 2019, and it's Lacey Frazier here with Whole Soul School and Foundations Transformation Talk Podcast. And I am super excited to be talking with Philip Rose today. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Um, we have a theme going on this month, Philip, about uh, the journey of personal transformation. And you have agreed to come in and share a little bit about your story and your your journey, your road to transformation. And I'm I'm so grateful for that. Um, Thank, you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So so tell me a little bit about, or actually tell our, our listeners a little bit about about you. Let's start off with that. Okay. Well, I live in Raleigh now. I'm married. My wife, Jennifer, and I have been married since 1997, so 22 years. We have three children, uh, a a freshman in college at Appalachian State, and then two in high school, uh, so two sons and a daughter. And that keeps life very busy for us. I imagine so. Um, uh, Right now, I am working uh, as a paralegal role for an attorney out of Charlotte. Uh, the way that I met you, of course, is uh, uh, I, I was an attorney in my former life and uh, ran into some trouble with my law practice and ended up going to Butner Federal Prison, uh, where I served 33 months uh, there, and I'm still currently on probation. Um, and it was a transformational experience, and we'll get into that as we talk. Yeah. But uh, that's... That's basically who I am. I'm very involved with my community and my church, um, which I've been a part of my whole life. And uh, just a lot of different things going on in life right now, but uh, kind of taking a new approach. Uh, I got out of prison in um, September of 2017, and so uh, have a different and maybe better perspective on life now, I hope, as a result of my experiences. Oh, wonderful. Well, I definitely want to talk about that quote-unquote new approach and your new perspective. Uh, It sounds like you really made a shift uh, while you were were in prison. Uh, You talked about sort of the the former life um, and a new approach and perspective. So share with us a little bit about about how that experience and that journey helped helped shift your sort of perspective on life, I guess. Well, I was, uh, my practice uh, was a real estate practice uh, of my law practice. And it, it was very busy. I was very blessed to be busy. I'm not sure if I recognized that at the time, um, but I had a lot of clients, a lot of customers, and just, you know, I would get to work at 7.38 in the morning, and I would be there until the UPS drop box told me I had to leave. So, you know, that was 7, 7.30 at night. Sometimes I'd make runs to the airport to, to get packages out. Um, so I was very hands-on and, and very busy. And, of course, at this time, you know, my wife was pretty much a stay-at-home mother with our three children who were, of course, young at the time. And so life was busy. Uh it, And I just felt like, to some extent, it was a practice of my own creation, but I was very much uh, the proverbial rat on the wheel. Mm. I just felt like I was just always on a grind, and I I felt trapped to the point where, I mean, we were were doing well. We were not a wealthy family, but we were definitely doing well uh, and able to provide for the things that my family needed. And so, but I just felt like, I, I love the people and the personal interactions that I had with my practice, but the the grind of it, the paperwork and all that, it just it wasn't it wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. But I just felt like I didn't have a choice. I felt mm. like I was trapped in by, you know, for lack of a better word, my success in my practice, and I really couldn't see a way out of it. I was just it was just the way to provide and it was the what I had to do and so you know the the fact that I couldn't make my kids concerts or ball games or whatever that was just that was just collateral damage to the fact that I was working to provide and so it it really was um and a lot a lot of this is is aided by hindsight of course but a lot of it I I did feel at the time and I just I didn't know 
you know, I, I couldn't figure out where I was going to be going with this. You know, is this going to be, yeah, I always kind of felt like life would be a series of upward steps. And I felt like I had reached a plateau and it was just sitting there. And I was just kind of spinning on that wheel, you know, doing what I needed to do to provide. And uh, April of 2012, um, it was a regular day in my practice. I had clients in my waiting room. I had several closings, residential real estate closings that were going to happen that day. And uh, so I was in my office getting ready for it. And my paralegal called me and she's like, you might need to come up here. And I was like, okay, what's going on? She goes, I really can't say. And uh, I started going up the steps to the main level of my office. And two FBI agents were coming down the steps to greet me. Um, And that was when my life changed. And I got off of that wheel, (laughs) not in the way that I had ever envisioned it. Um, but that obviously meant uh, the FBI came that day. Uh, they went through my office. They, I, you know, technically was not the object of their um, attention that day, but it soon turned into the fact that I was going to be prosecuted for uh, basically mail fraud, wire fraud, uh, conspiracy charges for things that, and I don't know if you want to get into all that, but just things that uh, I should have been more aware of in my practice, and I wasn't. And uh, so that was the downfall of my law practice and the beginning of my um, time with the federal government at Butner. And would you say the beginning of your transformation or at least the journey, uh, the, the beginning of your awareness that life was about to change big time? Well, when when the FBI comes and knocks on your door, it, it if you can't figure that out, you're <laughs> you're pretty you're pretty dense. But absolutely, and and so the way that my case worked, uh, April of two thousand and twelve was when they uh, knocked on my door, and and basically that shut my business down. The publicity from that, you know, yeah. understandably shut my business down. Um, but the way my case worked, a lot of it was still under seal. And so I actually went from that period of time, April of 2012, uh, I, I was not actually sentenced until October of 2014. And then I reported to Butner January the 5th of 2015. So it was a really wow. long period of time, which I was just kind of sitting uh, on another wheel, so to speak, of, of just really doom and gloom and despair and ticked off at the world and felt like everywhere I went that people were pointing at me probably was not true in any sense but I just felt like I had a big sign of you know look at me I'm a potential felon or whatever pointing at me and so the craziest thing and I've told people this before is that I didn't feel a sense of relief until I got to Butner and and I got to Butner and I was laying in the bunk back on the beach where they throw all the new guys and the beside the bathroom, just the worst possible spot you can be in in this particular dorm situation. And all of a sudden, I mean, I was laying in bed and it was just like started rolling over me that, you know, I can let my guard down now. I don't have to be on such of a, a, a live in such a tense and clenched up life. And, wow. and, and another thing that kind of was part of that was for the longest time between the time that the FBI came and the time that I reported, I was just mad. Mm-hmm. And I was one of the people in the case had uh, worn a wire to give the FBI information about me. I was mad at that guy, and I wanted to you know, do things to him and all that. And it just dawned on me. I was like, if I just stay mad all the time, it's not going to accomplish anything. And it's just going to eat me up, and it's just going to make things worse. There's just no point in it. And so uh, I just it kind of just all happened at one time where I just said, I've got to let that go. I've got to let that go. And the, what was another crazy part is I had no concept of what prison was going to be like. I had no p- concept of what kind of people I was going to be there with. And when I got to the to the dorm where I was going to be spending the next good part of my life, the guys there were so nice. So many guys were so nice and went reaching out to me and saying, hey, man, it's going to be all right, and tell me about yourself and tell me about your story, and here's a toothbrush and here's some shower <laughs> shoes and just stuff that it just blew me away. And so mm-hmm. just knowing that 
I wasn't going to a place, fortunately for me, in a camp environment, I wasn't going to a place where I was going to be like physically endangered and having to worry about that kind of thing. You know, Philip, I, I am, before we get too much farther down the line in the interview, I just wanted to stop here and, and tell you how amazed I am at how the universe provided you a way off that hamster wheel that you felt like you were on. Um, certainly not probably the way you had hoped or expected, but if we really look at this thing from a bird's eye view, you were living a life in which you felt somewhat trapped by its condition, conditioning and, and you were motivated by, by external things and you knew you, you had an, a feeling inside of yourself that you were, you, were, you were trapped. You were running the same program over and over again and, and ultimately you were not happy. Um, it sounds like at least in certain aspects of your life, uh, but you did not know how you were going to get yourself out of that life and create something new. Uh, but you clearly were putting the messages out to the universe because because this it sounds like this this indictment and this prison sentence um, really pushed kind of like a pause button for you. It did, and again, it was not in a way that I would have ever expected or really wanted. But uh, what I decided in those moments, or when I first got to Butner and first reported there, was this can either be a really, really horrible experience for me, and, and certainly in aspects of it were really tough. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They were tough on me, but even more so, they were tough on my family. And you know, I, I left my wife, who then she had to become the breadwinner, which she was not in that role before. She was the primarily the stay-at-home mother, and of course, leaving my three children behind was just uh, that was devastating and the effect it had on my parents and, and just the whole community. So it, it, there were lots of, of devastating and negative things to it, but I decided that th these next 33 or ever how many months I was going to have to spend, I was going to try to make the best of it as I could. Whatever way that I could do that, I was going to try to figure that out. I didn't know what it was going to, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know what shape that I was going to take. I just knew that I was going to try to to be the best person I could be during that sentence and so that when I got out I would be able to hit the ground running and, and keep on you know being a good father being a good husband and being a good person in the community so these were things that I, I didn't know how I was going to do but I was determined to figure it out. Wow well I kudos to you for for having that attitude going going in I mean because what a balancing act between the the, the emotional roller coaster that I'm sure this was for you and your family, uh, and then also all of the internal sort of thoughts and feelings you were having about how am I going to make it through this and how, how am I going to do this ne next leg of my life journey in a way that's, um, that is going to be fruitful. And, and how can I turn this into some kind of opportunity for change and for growth? Now, of course, we are talking in hindsight, so um, I don't know how conscious you were of your awareness of that, but it sounds like you were pretty aware that you were going to make this, you were going to see this as an opportunity to, to grow and to change somehow. Exactly, and, and hindsight, I think, has helped shape uh, how I have viewed it, and, and I'm sure, uh, you know, if I could go back in time and talk to that person uh, four years ago or six years ago or whatever at that stage, I, I probably would have punched myself now <laughs> and, and said, get out of here. But but uh, I, I just think that's how I've always been in, in my life. I've always been a glasses half full kind of person, and this was this whole indictment and, and uh, prison thing is by far the most stressful and traumatic thing that I've ever had to deal with. Uh, so just just knowing that a, a positive attitude has helped me in so many other ways in my life getting to that point, I said, well, this is really going to be a challenge and a test of that belief of looking at things positively. And so I, I really just tried to, to pour that 
life of belief into this new experience as, as devastating as it was. So, you know, this, this month at Whole Soul, we're talking about this journey of personal transformation. And, and one of the things that I have been talking a lot about is this perspective uh, that has helped me so much. And what I've been through in my life is the perspective of life as a journey, that every aspect of life, every, everything about our life is an adventure it is a journey and it is it is when i look at it with an attitude of openness and a willingness to learn from everything that happens in my life it has helped me traverse and and manage some of the negative experiences i've had uh in some real positive ways and you know really looking at the any negative experiences or interactions or emotions as cues to to help me learn more about myself um so i am sure that you know it sounds like to me you were you were moving through your life in a very regimented way in a in a programmed kind of way and then this kind of this experience sort of blindsided you off the off the path that you were on and and there was a big fork in that road and and you went into prison and you and you spent how many months in prison I was 33 months 33 months yeah. and so I know that when you uh, you and I met when you stepped into my uh, change your thoughts change your life program which was a year-long program and you started to do a lot of self-inquiry there um, and we talked a lot about life as a journey and the possibility of change and transformation uh, so I guess I'm, I'm curious as we now I'll sit on the other side of that chapter in your life, uh, how you look back on your own self and some of the major aspects of self that that you feel were transformed during that period of time. I mean, I guess I'm kind of saying, you know, as you look at yourself now and you, you remember who you were before the experience, what were what were some of the biggest things you think that have that have changed in you? through that process? Well, adversity provides an opportunity for growth. And I think that that is what I'm hopeful that I'm taking from the adversity that I had in my life and, and with my family. And so I think now, and, and you were a, a great helper in helping me to see this, but Life is a journey, as you said, and, and so the sooner that you can realize that about life in general, the, the, the easier, maybe that's not the right word, but the, the more capable you'll be of managing the ups and the downs. I don't think life's ever going to be easy for anybody, but, but if you can recognize that, hey, there's going to be good times in life, and then there's going to be times that are tough, and if you can just take that as part of the whole uh, big picture of your life, then you're going to be a lot better positioned to manage things, I think. And so, so much of what you helped me see in the group sessions that we had was that, uh, and in fact, I think when one of the first, maybe the first meeting that we had was you said, this, you're going to look back on this as one of the best experiences of your life. And me at that point in my life, I just thought that was the dumbest, most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard. You know, I mean, I think my eyes almost rolled out of my head. But, <laughs> but the reality of the situation is that when you pour yourself into something and when you try to find the positives and when you try to make the proverbial lemonade out of the lemons that life has handed you, you can take any experience and become a better person as a result of it. And that's my goal. I'm not, I'm not in any way saying I'm, I'm some great person, but I think that I'm a more appreciative person of life, and I think I'm more empathetic to the struggles that people have. And I realized that the struggle that I had, it was, for the most part, a self-inflicted struggle. And I look at the struggles that so many people have that are not self-inflicted, whether it's diseases or cancers or poverty or things like that and I realized that you know maybe I needed that splash of cold water in my life to realize that you know there's a lot more out there than going to work and being on that wheel so to speak yeah 
You know, as I listen to you and I think about the the, the blog article that I wrote and the podcast and the fireside chat that Marie and I did recently, and I listen to you, I'm 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 wondering. You know, I, I really think there are certain sort of ingredients that help the process of transformation and things like the willingness to be more self-aware. And I'm wondering, you know, it it sounds like your, this experience in prison uh, really helped you become more aware of yourself, you know, that your triggers in life, the way you think, the way you feel, how you were treating other people, where you might have been judging other people, where you were feeling more like a victim when you when you started to learn that you could be more of a creator in your life. And so would you say that you became through that journey a more self-aware person? Yes. And and that's still a journey that I feel like I'm yeah. on. I I'm, I'm kind of feel like I'm still at the beginning of the trail, so to speak, with, with where I th- would like to be eventually. But one thing that you help to see is that you can't just uh, wake up and decide that you're going to be that, that person. It, it, it is definitely a journey that requires work, and you have to put work into it. And... Uh, yeah, not to knock anybody, but there were guys that came to group uh, or had been in previous groups that I would talk to, and they would just poo-poo the whole idea. And really, when I think back and look back on it, it's just because they just weren't ready to put in that work. And I, I think that that's a, a very key takeaway that I got, is that you've got to work at it. You can't just... You can't just say that you're there as far as a transformed or more appreciative person and then just you know think you can coast through with that as your new attitude because you I, I mean you just drive around Raleigh traffic and that <laughs> that'll test your you know how, how uh, patient and non-judgmental you can be <laughs> and so I, I just think it's always just something that you have to work on it's always something that you have to be aware of and and you have to remind yourself daily hourly sometimes you know when I got three kids sometimes by the minute that uh, you just have to step back and look at things from that bigger picture rather than just being so caught up and absorbed in the dramas and the minutia of the daily grind you know you've, you've done such a nice job of, of describing that pulling out and looking at the bigger picture and and I, I, it's part of the work that you're talking about. You know, this journey of transformation doesn't, like you said, it just doesn't happen overnight. You don't just make the decision and you're a changed person. There, there, there is a process almost that one goes through as they, as they shed the old skin and the old programming and the old ways of, of being. And, and at the same time, they're learning if they're if they're fortunate, right? They're learning new skills. They're learning new ways to see things. They're learning um, how to prioritize. They're learning uh, how how to label their feelings, and 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 they're learning what their triggers are, and they're learning about their conditioning, and and as they're and then they're moving into these these new skills as they become more self aware. They shed their their old old self and their old programming, and and they adopt and they move into a new a new perspective, um, and it sounds very much like that's what you have journeyed and what you're open to continuing to journey. Um, one of the uh, a few of the other ingredients that I think are important along this journey of transformation are humility and vulnerability. Um, and I didn't know if you'd be willing to speak a little bit to what those two words mean for you and, and how they helped kind of you in your in your transformation. Wow. Well, vulnerability, I guess my whole life prior to this whole experience has been uh, that that I'm invulnerable, that that nothing can phase me and that I can control everything and I can be 
uh, the master of my own domain without having to, um, you know, really rely on anybody else. And, and that and, and that if I had weaknesses, which certainly I've got a, a laundry list of, that I would just keep those pushed down and, and, and just you know, try to overcompensate in other ways. And so uh, if, if you get your law practice uh, busted up by a bunch of FBI agents, uh, you, you have to realize that you have vulnerabilities uh, in life. And you have to realize also that you have to be able to talk to people about that and, and bring other people in in your life. And one, one thing I've learned is that everybody has something out there that is uh, a vulnerability or, a, or, or something that, that is a concern or a fear in their life. And once you're willing to be honest with yourself about that, then that's when you can really start to, to see a change. Mm-hmm. And, and so, if anything, this experience has helped me be more honest with myself about who I am, what I bring to the table positively or strength-wise, as well as the weaknesses that I have. Mm-hmm. And that was just something that would be completely off the table before for, for me to... to go there in, in that way of discussion and then the, and I think humility is part of that too where you, you've got to you've got to be able to recognize those things and and uh, talk to people about it and, and be open to that being who you are so the humility was sort of a is sort of a gateway to uh, allowing yourself to be vulnerable yes and and in yeah. in, in the in, in group and in the prison, you know, most people don't think pair the word vulnerability and prison. Um, it's not a place where being vulnerable is necessarily embraced and accepted. But what what I think you and I've talked about before is that part of what was so powerful about the group experience was that that you were able to be vulnerable in that space, and that helped. Uh, in front of other people and with other people. And that helped you loosen up and let go and become more aware and, um, and, and really helped with that being honest with yourself. Well, that, that was something that we, we talked about a lot because your office in your conference room where we met was at the very front of the facility. And so when we would go into that space, it really became, for lack of a better word, a sacred space for us because we could sit in there and it was 15 of us, I believe, and, you know, 15 men sitting in a room all wearing green uniforms and and being learning how to open up because that was a yeah. big part of it because, you know, when we first went in there, I think we were all fairly similar in uh, most of us, I think, were in the white collar world, and so we all had kind of similar backgrounds for the most part, and so we were all probably had that same armor on about we're invincible and we're tough and we can figure things out and blah blah blah. We don't need help from anybody else, and so just learning how to number one open up, and then once we started learning how to open up, and then watching other guys in the group that were maybe on different points of the path of opening up. It was just amazing. It was really amazing to see. And then we would kind of say, hey, this is this is what goes on up here in this room. And then when you go back into the regular uh, you know, area of, of the camp, you kind of had to be a little more guarded with it. But at the same time, you know, we had that bond and we had that brotherhood that kind of you could you could pick each other up and you could say hey it's okay you know to have a tough day or a tough moment or whatever and so it was really a it was a fascinating thing to be part of and to watch and and to have an opportunity to grow in wow i just feel the i feel the the power of that and the power of of the brotherhood and the power of vulnerability and and I think about, I had just as you were talking, I was thinking about your life before you had this experience. And it, it sounds more in that life that you, you were like on an island in a way. You know, you were, you were sort of barreling through life in the way that you thought 
you were supposed to barrel through life as dictated by the conditions of family and society and things like that and and it was kind of you against the world and what I what I feel when with what you just said is is you really learned to to let go and and let down a lot of that defenses a lot of the defenses that kept you in that sort of armor to use your word and and you were willing to open up to other people you were willing to share a bit about yourself gradually over time and in doing that you tapped into humility which then allowed you to feel vulnerability which allowed you to share which allowed you to 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 really transform from the inside out. I mean, I, I've often felt it was, I, I, it's almost like an alchemical process that happens with people when they step into uh, really embracing this concept of, of transformation and change. And they start to understand that they have the power to, to change their life, to create a new reality. You know, and as somebody who knew you at the beginning of your prison sentence and somebody who's sitting with you today, um, you know, I know and can feel what a different person you are. I mean, so much more laid back, uh, so much more compassionate, uh, so much more connected, connected in all ways. And um, it's just it's amazing to to see and to feel. And I feel so honored to have witnessed at least that phase of your journey of change. Um, so, you know, is there is there anything else that you'd like to comment on as far as the elements that really helped you, either that were within you or outside of you, that helped you sort of negotiate this this transformative part of your life? Well, the the seclusion of, of prison life, I, I think I, I attribute that to, for lack of a better way to put it, it was almost like we were in a monastery, you know, and we didn't have the, we don't have the pressures of life bearing down on us when you're when you're in that environment, and if you try to use that as a as a positive, and say, hey, for the next whatever period of time in my life, I don't have to worry about those the bills and the getting the kids to school and the activities and all this and that, which I, I'm not making light of at all because it's such a, it can be such a busy and, and busy part of anybody's life. But I didn't have to deal with that. And so I tried to say, let's invest this time that I have in trying to look inside, trying to make myself a better person. And, and as I said, it, it's, it's not a finished product at all. It's still an ongoing thing. But I think you just have to you have to set aside that time it takes the time to to put into the the work of making yourself a, a, a better person and making yourself a transformed person and so that's that's really again how I tried to look at my my time there and and when when you know and I, I had kind of come to that thought already and then when you had to sign up for your class and I went into your class and then really bought into your class, that's when it really started kind of accelerating for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for, for sitting with me today and being willing to talk about the journey. And I know I know we'll have many more conversations uh, as I think you've, you have uh, articulated that you would like to be a part of the film that we, we may do at some point about the transformation journey. And... Um, hopefully you'll come back and talk to us on another podcast at for transformation talks. Um, well, so thank you for having me and, and thank you for all that you've done to help me with my life and yeah. the transformation because I really uh, there have been angels in my life that came before, during and after prison, but I, you're, you were definitely an angel for me to, mm-hmm. to, to give us that opportunity and so I will, I will always be thankful to you for that. Well, thank you. I, I, it's such an honor for me to be, to be a part of your journey, and 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 I've said it many times before, but you and many of the other men that went through this uh, help have helped me along the way in in my own journey, which is what, what this is all about. You know, I I believe that we we come to Earth to to 
experience a journey and an adventure. And everybody we meet in every aspect of our life is part of that adventure. So um, I thank you and, and many of the other men for influencing my life and helping me understand things about myself that that I needed to I need to understand more. So and I also just want to say that I, I absolutely agree the journey of transformation is always ongoing. It's 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 an unfoldment and and we will be transforming uh, for the rest of our lives as long as we're breathing. So so um, thank you, Philip, for being here today. And, and thank you, everybody out there who, who l- will listen to this. I want to take the opportunity to let you know that our Whole Soul School and Foundation dot org website is live. Uh, it is up and running, and there's a few few glitches here and there, but uh, I'm really excited about it because really everything is now under under one roof. We've got we've got the podcast interviews and the vlogs and the blogs and um, just everything is under under one house now, and that feels really good to me. So please check it out. Uh, Please sign up on our mailing list uh, on the homepage of the website, because when you sign up on the mailing list, then we're not going to inundate you with emails, but you will get a monthly newsletter that will share with you what our plans are for that particular month. Uh, And you can come back and check out these these interviews. Uh, And you can also like us on Facebook, where we try to put out uh, couple times a week reminders for the soul and we're also on twitter and all the other social medias and i'm the first to admit that i'm i'm not uh the best technologically savvy person but uh, we've got people on the team that are helping us out with all of this and i'm so so grateful so please support whole soul school and foundation whether it's just by listening clicking like subscribing and of course there's always the opportunity to donate we are a 501c3 non profit uh, and all donations help support our mission to get this educational platform up and running and to share the the wisdom uh, from other people as well as ourselves uh, for people who otherwise might not have access to it so thank you again philip thank you listeners and we'll see you next time